If you ever doubted the cultural significance of our game, five minutes of exposure to Ken Burns baseball will flip your mind. And now for the first time ever, Ken's iconic documentary series baseball will air in HD when MLB Network features the first inning this Wednesday. That's tomorrow at 8 Eastern. And then uh, moving forward to watch the entire film, which has been starting from scratch with color added correction, 19 hours worth of footage. It's been reformatted to the uh, from the original square image to widescreen. Ken has done some more meticulous work and made the perfect baseball documentary somehow even better. And it's a thrill to have Ken on with us this morning on Hot Stove. Ken, thanks for the time. We have so many things to ask you about, about the, the, new, the new version that we're going to watch starting tomorrow night. It, was it simply a matter of new technology and cleaning up the print, or was some of the narrative and some of the storytelling changed as well? Nothing's changed in the content of it unless you think seeing things so clearly and in a widescreen format is giving you an even more intimate view of it. I mean, this is a really good feel good story. First of all, the help of the uh, MLB network wouldn't have happened without them. This is a hugely time consuming, many, many months, more than a year uh, restoration job, needed their help, financial and otherwise. Uh, got it from 12 teams as well, from the Red Sox and the Yankees, the Cardinals, the Angels, the Dodgers, the Cubs, the White Sox, you know, you name it, 12 teams stepped up and, and helped us with this extraordinary thing. Let me just explain. My thumbnail is about the size of an old 16 millimeter negative. It's really tiny and it's in this square uh, version. So what we've done is we've taken 90,000 feet of film that's 3,600,000 3, frames. And painstakingly at the George Eastman House in Rochester, New York, painstakingly inspected, repaired, cleaned every single one of those images. Wow. And then we took them to New York where my uh, unbelievable colleague, Dan White, worked for months in a microscope. And when COVID hit, you know, everything had to be done remotely, putting together, re-editing the entire film, every dissolve, the same thing, but entirely new. And then at Technicolor Postworks in New York City, they changed it to the widescreen 16.9 format that we expect. So when you've been watching my film uh, on the MLB network for the last 15 years, you've got a little proseme and you know little edges uh, that they've done there, so you can accommodate that. Well, this is now widescreen. I'm beginning to read license plates now. I'm beginning to see details in the old shots that I photographed myself originally back in the early 90s that I had never seen. And it's just so exciting. So everything's been enhanced. It's gone from a standard def kind of thing to the high resolution of the uh, Ultra HD. It's, it's, it's been a fantastic process. And hats off to all of those unsung heroes, the uh, folks uh, behind the screen who really worked frame by frame to take this square and to turn it into a 16.9 with much more rich detail. Now, when you take a square at 69, we were worried we we're going to lose a lot of things, top, bottom, sides. And what we did is we could painstakingly, frame by frame, 3,600,000 frames, do it so very little information was lost. If we needed to tilt up, we did. Tilt down, we did. And so what you've got is just a spanking new, refurbished, looks like it just came out of the shower, uh, looking good, feeling good as a testament to what you said, man. This is the greatest game that's ever been invented. I don't care what anybody else says. I love the other sports, but there's nothing like this game and no game mirrors us more precisely than our beloved national pastime. Man, Ken, that, that is so powerful. I can't wait to my, watch this. My, my one question and the fear I would have if it was my film was, might I ruin it? Were you yeah. concerned at all about that? <laughs> Terrified. My my colleague Dan White would send me these photographs of like real 37 uh, from the vaults way deep in the George Eastman house in Rochester, New York, saying it's OK, it's OK. And then they painstakingly run it through these things frame by frame. We're talking 90,000 feet, three, over three million frames. Mm -hmm. And they just did a wonderful job. But I was, you know, usually I don't know about you. I go on a shoot and I'm not really happy until I know that the film is in the lab. 
lab. Well, it's not like that anymore with digital stuff, but I still don't really exhale until the drive is back in our hands, you know? And this was a multi-month process in which I had been promising everybody it's going to look really great. And I'm, I'm just so happy. It, 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 <laughs> It feels like early Christmas, you know, and I wish they were running it tonight because, boy, we could use a little distraction, a little game. Yeah, absolutely. So now based on based on the success that you've had doing this, uh, the restoration process, I, I mean, I, I'm not going to ask you to do it. But what what I might know about jazz and the Civil War is through your work. Yeah. Uh, is there a similar plan for those we films and others to clean up as well? Yeah, we've we've already done the Civil War, uh, which, you know, we're on the edge now of losing, Matt, some of this stuff, the quarter inch tape that we originally recorded the interviews with and then transferred to 16 millimeter time. I mean, it's very, very complicated. We're at the sort of outer shelf life. So we're rushing to get some of the early films, Brooklyn Bridge, Statue of Liberty, Huey Long, the Congress done, some of the ones in the in the mid 90s. We're going to move to jazz. That was the last one before we really uh, were making a switch to digital, which it makes it easy easier to do these up converts, uh, as you can imagine. But yeah, Civil War is done and it looks great. It's been out for a few years. Jazz is the next on, on our agenda, but we got to get support. What was so great is that baseball would say, we love your film. This is, this is us. This is who we need to be. We're going to help you in every way we can. So MLB Network stepped up big time, clean up hitter. And then, you know, it's so great to have the participation of 12 of the 30 teams saying, yes, of course, let us help. And each contributed the, uh, a like amount. And you just sort of feel like we as a baseball family did this and put it back together. And now for both you, the broadcast for you guys on, on um, MLB Network and on PBS, it's going to look brand new. Like it just just was broadcast first time. I'm so excited for you guys to see Man, it. We'll just see some great pumped. details. It's going to be awesome. Hey, Ken, two, two quick things, and then we're going to let you go. But um, what was your fa favorite period that you had when you look back at this documentary? And the second question on this is, how are you going to do 2020? Because that's yeah. so unique in itself. So unique, you know, and I, what I want to say is the 10th inning, the one, our update of the series that took us to 2009 and went through steroids and Yankees and Braves, Red Sox finally winning, all of that sort of drama was already digitized and has already been set. You know what, Harold, they're all interesting periods to me, but you can't really set the real clock going on the best of baseball, a golden age, until at least April 15th, 1947, when mm. Jack... Roosevelt Robinson, the grandson of the slave, made his way to first base at Ebbets Field. It's just because it can't be a golden age if you've excluded some of what turns out to be the best players. Now, I've got a favorite baseball statistic is in the years after Jackie, though African-Americans were still brought into the game in a kind of quota system in the National League, like one or maybe two per team. The Dodgers led the way, of course. Um, African-Americans won the MVP nine yeah. out of 11 years. Yeah. And that just it's tells amazing. you what was missing. So for me, I love every period. I love going back into the 19th century and learning about these guys and the teens and the aughts and Babe Ruth and the, arriving in the 20s uh, as a hitter and the 30s. All of that stuff is great, but you can't really say this is a golden age till you start. And remember, Jackie just doesn't bring in African-Americans. He's going to bring in a Hispanic wave. It's going to permit us to mirror our immigration process with Asian and other, other players. So it's just it's a fantastic mirror of, of who we are. Hey, Ken, speaking of Jackie Robinson, I know we said one more, but here's the, the, really the last question, because we mentioned Jackie Robinson. Does the restoration process give us any more clarity as to whether Yogi Berra's longstanding contention that Jackie was out <laughs> stealing home in game one of the That's 1955 World Series? Do we now see it clearer? That's a great, great question, Matt. Now, I'm with the Robinson camp, having been born in Brooklyn. I uh, never <laughs> lived there, but I was born there, and I've traded shamelessly on that. And for the last maybe 15 years of, of Yogi's life, he and I had a running battle. I was at the White House once where he's yelling across the room, out, and I'm yelling to him, safe. He gets on the bus to go back to the hotel. This window opens, and I'm sort of going out, looking at Costas and saying, wow, that was fun. And uh, Costas and Billy Crystal and I were the only 
these civilians there, all of them Hall of Famers. The window of the bus slides open and he goes, out, and I'm going safe. And so, <laughs> we've been arguing about that forever. So I'm, I'm, I'm a kind of umpire that puts his Brooklyn spectacles on and says, after further consideration in moving up to HD, I can say without hesitation that he is safe. <laughs> That's excellent. That's excellent. Hey, Ken, we really appreciate you being with us. Thanks for the time. Can't wait to watch the first yep. inning. Uh, again, the entire series will air on MLB Network in HD, the new print, the new format, the new cleaned up version starting tomorrow at 8 Eastern on MLB Network. And Ken, for everybody, Ken, I just got to say thank you for your work, for who you are, what you stand for. It's Good been, stuff, been awesome. Thank yep. you so much. You can't you wait to watch so, the film. So grateful thank you. for all of you guys for helping us get it done. Thanks so much.